Hi, I'm Christopher and this is Made by Chance. We recently renovated this guest bedroom and this breaker panel turns out that it's highly inconvenient where it's located above the bed. So we wanted to make some artwork to go on this wall in order to conceal it better. However, my wife has a lot more experience making pretty things than I do, so I figured I'd let her show you what she wants to do with this space. Come follow along as I show how I made this. The way this thing is made is a whole bunch of pieces of 4x4 four four are cut and then painted different shades of blue and yellow and they're all attached to a single piece of OSB. So we started off by cutting that piece of OSB that would be used as a backer board. Alright, to give me varying depths within the art itself, I'm going to be using a 4x4 four four and then cutting it to different heights. So the smallest height I'm going to work with is a quarter inch, whereas the tallest height I'm going to work with is one inch. And that's for a couple different reasons. The quarter inch is actually the same height as the OSB board I'm using. So if I want to put some on the outside, at least it'll be even with that OSB layer and cover it. Whereas I don't want to go too big because I'm trying to reduce the weight of this as much as possible. all the blocks in a rough pattern or lack thereof in order to get an idea of kind of how this might flow and kind of played around with some heights and some um, different sizes. So for the layout of the blocks we had seven different block heights in eighth inch intervals and we did our best to completely randomize the block height so that no two adjacent blocks were the same height. I'll also point out that there are blocks that go around the entire perimeter of the OSB to help hide the OSB if you're looking at it from a side angle. We had to get a little crafty with how to attach the ones on the perimeter, but I'll show you how we did that later. Now to help lay out the colors of the blocks, we used an alphanumeric numbering system where we used B's for blue and Y's for yellow, and then we used numbers one through seven to represent different shades of blue or yellow. And so in the colors, uh, the corners that would be blue and yellow, you would start with ones and twos, and then as you went further away, it would fade into more five, sixes, and sevens to just kind of make that fade apparent in the final piece. All right, so what I've got going on here is um, I've already done what I'm considering the lightest shade of blue. And the way I'm doing this is simply starting with a white base and then taking the navy paint that I've purchased and adding just a little bit of navy at a time um, to try and go basically from now my lightest coat to my darkest coat that I have on a test strip here. Um, and so once I reach kind of the next shade, then I'm gonna go for um, what we've labeled B6 being the next to lightest shade. So I'll just keep progressing through these from uh, lightest to darkest until we're done with the blues and then we'll flip over to the yellows. So the way we attached all the pieces in the center to the OSB was by cutting a bunch of different shims the same height of all the pieces that we cut. So that's quarter inch up to one inch in eighth inch intervals. And then we would use a combination of these shims to just put across a row um, to make all the heights the exact same. So the pieces plus the shim height would be the same across the row. And then you could put a board on top of all these and when you clamp it down, you would get even pressure across all the pieces even though they're different heights. So that way when you're gluing them down to the USB, they all get the same clamping pressure to get that good binding strength. This was a really long and tedious process as we were given each row about 30 minutes to an hour to dry before we'd move on to the next one. We thought through some other ways to attach these such as using brads or screws from the backside to hold them in place, but we were worried about the smaller pieces such as the quarter inch ones, having the brad or the screw actually going through it and then us having to redo the piece. But if you have another idea for a way to attach these that's more time efficient, feel free to add a comment below this video.
To attach the pieces on the perimeter, we used thin strips of five millimeter utility board and it would overlap the OSB and then it would also overlap half of the pieces that were on the perimeter. And this was thin enough that you wouldn't see it from a side angle, but it would give it enough rigidity to actually hold and secure those perimeter pieces on to make it look like it was all part of the middle piece. I started off by marking these strips where the blocks needed to go and then we would just add some glue, put the blocks on, and then I would use an electric uh, staple gun to put a staple in through the back and it was just enough to hold it in place to let that glue get good and dry. When all the perimeter pieces were completed, we flipped over the center piece and used the same process to attach the four sides. For the final install, we use these heavy duty metal French cleats, which I really like for heavier duty items. Um, they're really robust and as long as you get a anchor inside a stud, they're not going anywhere. I am super happy with how this turned out, but there were a few lessons I learned in the process. The first has to do with the color gradient. I think if I were to do this over again, I'd have actually gone ahead and laid out both my yellow and blue color gradients in order to see where the lightest color of yellow and the lightest color of blue kind of matched up versus just diving in and doing one color and then the next. Another lesson I learned during this is that I think that I'd have actually painted my backing, so in this case OSB, a solid color in order to basically hide it back behind the blocks where there's gaps. I think possibly a black or a gray would probably accomplish this look and just make it look like shadows back there. The third thing I learned during this process is according to the original design I had set out, I had planned on the blocks that are on the outside perimeter kind of being free floating in order to hide that OSB that is um, holding the rest of the piece together. Well, unfortunately, I didn't account for the OSB that I was trying to hide whenever I was actually cutting the blocks to create that perimeter. And so therefore, I should have probably added about a half inch to those outside blocks in order to both hide the OSB and to help create kind of a, a similar look across the entire piece, rather than right now, all the pieces on the edge look slightly shorter than anything that's on the actual OSB mounted portion. If you liked this kind of content, leave us a comment below so that we can make more like this for you. In the meantime, take a chance and art something. Is that how you do that? I <laughs> do that right? <laughs>